In this session, we're going to dig further into head accents in dialogue and how we use them, and some other stuff, before we get to the secret. Oh, I just wanted to say, yes, on this hitting accents, um, Milt Call gave three lectures at the Union in Hollywood about 15 years ago or something, just when he was quitting the industry. and. Uh, he had a thing where uh, Geraldine Page, the actress, was saying something to the little girl. She's get, the, the little girl, she's saying the little girl is ugly or something. Who would want a little girl like you or something? I don't know what the line is, but it was full of accents. And what Milt did was he, and he ran this thing in the, line te the, the pencil test. The, 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 the woman says, well, and then, and then she took the chair and who? And she sat down on the chair and then she picked up who would want a little girl as ugly as you? And, or something like that. And he hit boom, boom, boom over to the chiffonier. And uh, I said, how did you do, you know, how did you do that? Uh, it's wonderful. And uh, he said, thank God for an intelligent question. His answer was, he, she hit those words so hard, whatever they were, you know, well, who would want an ugly little girl like you? You know, she hit him so crisply and so hard, he said, I couldn't do it with the body. I thought I had to, I'm going to have to use the, I'll have her stool over here and I'll slam her down. He said, then I can get the stool go down and then the bum goes down and then I've got all this stuff to work with. And that scene is one of the, one of the mind-blowing pieces of perfection, I think. It's because it's got everything going. It's absolutely wonderful. All, everything we're talking about here is all working fully in that, in that shot. So you hit those accents. That's the, mo the conclusion is hit the accents hard and hit them with the hands if you can or hit them with a prop or anything. I mean, I noticed it, was it the other day I was doing this and I, said, I was talking away and I suddenly went, <laughs> everybody went, you know, well, the people do that. I've had enough of this shit. You know, they just, don't they? they? They, or I'm quitting. You know, I'm quitting. Two accents, you know, three accents. Uh, one, I'm quitting. I'm quitting. It's not I'm quitting. That is meaningless, isn't it? <laughs> Ken Harris said, you know that, uh, is it Marvin the Martian has a mouth and a, some sort of a hat and big feet in, in one of those Bugs Bunny things? He's a black, and he had no mouth? I don't know how he talk. Anyway, something, I can't do it. I'm sure somebody can do that voice. The R32 modulator. <laughs> That's I'm it. going to blow up the earth. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but it's, um, uh, Ken Harris said he learned more about um, dialogue, doing, doing Marvin the <laughs> Marsh, uh, than he ever did with uh, Bugs Bunny or the Roadrunner. Well, the Coyote never spoke. But anything where he had dialogue, he learned more from this because he had to get, there was no mouth. So you had to get those head accents right, right? Or body accents. Did he have hand? I think he had a gun or something. I think you're restricted. He was very much restricted to the head. And he said, boy, did I learn about lips, <laughs> about dialogue, because we're having no mouth. So you've got to get the head. And Ken, being Warner Brothers, where it's mostly pantomime, Ken was, that was, I would say, his weakest part, with enormous respect. He, he just didn't have long dialogue scenes you know, to, to work on. So you hit the head, you hit those hand accent. Now, there's a, a very important thing coming up here. But so you, you just hit whatever you've got. I, I find for my taste, a lot of the, the Hollywood stuff, you know, it's too much, you know. Well, it becomes corny. Well, you know, at last you've come home, you know, or it's working too hard. Uh, uh, so. You can do an awful lot with, well, last you come home. 
or at last you've come home. You know, you can do an awful lot of much better acting uh, with it. So the main thing is you've got to find the accents and you've got to me uh, program your brain so that you don't even need to listen to the soundtrack and you've listened to it so much, it's in your head. And you hit the whatever accent. Now they found a wonderful thing, either during Pinocchio or after. It's, uh, and the old guys didn't know it. Ken didn't know this one. And I don't think Art did. In fact, he didn't. And this was the Mills and Frank and Ollie and Lounsbury and everybody figured this one out. Um, let's put, well, you've, well, at last your home. Let's say, say we're going to hit at. No, let's, let's do at, at, at last, at last. We'll hit here. This is our big accent. Uh, Frank Thomas said uh, on Pinocchio, they, the boy's voice for Pinocchio was so naive that they had to get these head accents up way early. Um, if he was going to say, well, I wasn't, well, at last, well, at last, because it was so uh, little kid naive, they would get, find the head to get the head up eight frames early. So the head accent would come up here. Say, anyway, very much to make the thing work, you had to be up there early. And then you would have the vowel on the modulation, but the head would come up terribly early. Well, at last you're home. Now in slow motion. The head is up four frames ahead of the vocal accent. The head goes down again to get ready to go up again to be up four frames ahead of the next vocal accent. The head accent goes down eight frames ahead of the next softer vocal accent, followed by a head accent up as he finishes speaking. Well, at last you're home. And they found it with working with soundtracks with Bing Crosby, who had this soft voice, you know, everything is woof, woofy, that they had to, to get any accent out of it, they'd have to get up early. And this led to this discovery that you should have the head accent or accents three to four frames early. So you're going to hit that accent there. Say we're on two, so I just kind of one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, uh, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-five, etc. They've got to hit on that frame. The rule was hit the head accent three to four frames early. It's a terrific thing, and you get much better, much better uh, action, much more convincing. The guy starts to talk. Um, there's drawing 17. Oh, golly, we're, we're going to have to put the mouth modulation on there. But you could be, you could hit it on 15, three frames ahead, OK? That's three. And if you were on ones, then you'd, you'd do it four frames ahead, however it works out on the chart. It's three or four, whatever's convenient. And I would put 
door in front of this, at least. Just insert at least. Where do you put that in, at least? But that's their rule of thumb. Hit it three or four frames early. Is that for all accents or just in, in this case of Pinocchio? No, all this? accents. All accents. This is an absolute, this is a all, all accents. In other words, if we're going, uh, here's the character, and he's going to, he's saying something here, and he's going to go up and he's going to hit. There's, there's the mouth modulation. You get up here. You might, yeah, you get up, you get up close. Let's maybe, no, let's, let's get up. Let's go even further. Get up there three or four frames early. And then mouth action on the modulation. So it's like, the, um, it's like the extra drawing in a way. You're getting an overlap or extra bang for the buck by doing it. It's up there, and of course it reads it. It reads, hi, earlier. Makes it read better. Now you're saying three to four accents on like even, or three to four frames early on even like a really hard accent? Would you like? Yeah. Kind of Get the head up there three or four frames early on any accent. Uh -huh. so, so whether bring, it's up a lot or up a little. So you bring it up to bring it down on that? No, bring, well you may cushion down after, you know, he's talking away. But if you're hitting something strong, you get up there three, three frame or four frames early. I, I just was wondering if that was um, one of the rules that you thought maybe was No, this is a wonderful or? rule. I would, uh -huh. this works, it just works. Okay. This works. <laughs> I don't know. There may be exceptions. I don't know of any. It's a terrific later development after the Golden Age. It's more common to have head accents go up, but of course head accents can go anywhere. Up, down, or sideways. Hi. 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 Here are four head accents going down. Don't give me any argument. Don't give me any argument. When you have a beat, um, say this is one and this is 13. Say it's a 12 frame beat, right? March time. This is one, yeah, 13. The animator, and you'd have a, golly, how many frames are there? One, uh, 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 uh. Say this is even timing. The rule for, for among animators is if you're doing a dance, the person hits the, the beat, you know, say I'm doing a preparation for a dance and, and it's um, in March time, dum dum right, like that. That's on tens, isn't it? Da -dum. It's faster. Anyway, say it's dum dee dum dee dum that's March time. Um, you would hit, 
hit, hit the contact two frames ahead of the beat. That's the sort of rule that animators have for a dance, right? Get the foot down two frames before the actual musical beat, before the drum goes boom. Okay, but there's a better, better one. What they, which uh, Mo came from the cutting room and, and was tra trained with a, a wonderful editor in England. And he said, what they do is they divide it into three, whatever the beat is, divide it into three and hit it a third of the before the beat, which is really in this case, it's like one, two, three, four, five frames. Is, it, is that, have I done it right? It's about four frames ahead if it's a 12 frame beat. That's the live action rule, isn't it? So I'd rather follow, who knows? Try the live, if you've got a musical track, I certainly would try that if you're hitting a beat. I'd be interested to know, <laughs> since you're gonna be doing a lot of that, I'd be interested to know, to know how, how that comes out, whether you, it's certainly going to work with two. That's what I always did. But I've just recently learned the live action, really good people do divide the beat into three and go a third before. It seems like maybe it makes sense that because of the, what you're saying with hitting the accent of the head four before, that it um, it, really it, it fits, doesn't it? Yeah. It fits that theory. Yeah, it pops you into Three it. to four early. I've heard that you want to sometimes start the mouth action two, one or two frames oh, before I'm the Oh, I'm glad track. you said that. I'll start to vibrate soon. <laughs> this is leading to something I feel terribly. I can't even say a sentence without getting upset on this one. Um, OK, now we get on to this terribly emotional thing here. So the mouth is open here, but the head's gone up here, right? And, for some, and because of this sort of rule, that later, when you've done your animation, you might want to advance the picture one frame, or two frames, or three frames. Sometimes the, the, the general rule is it looks better with the soundtrack dropped back two frames, or the, and conversely, the picture advanced. Your picture's two frames early. But the thing is, what you do is you animate level sync. For God's sake. <laughs> Animate level sync, and there's only one level sync, and that's right on the nose, right on the spot, right on the modulation, right on the vowel. Do your animation that way, please. Because then that's set. You know, that's, that's your foundation. You then go into the editing room, and you decide whether it's advanced one frame, two, three. I found there is no rule. I mean, Chuck Jones will tell you it's because of the sound in the theater and the physics waves of the distance going back and the sound travels at this speed. And that's, it's nonsense, because why does it work in a closed space? See, why does it? Nobody knows. Nobody knows why it's better advanced. It just is better. Frank Thomas d did a very nice thing always with his, with his um, stuff. He would, he would draw the mouth shapes on, on the exposure sheet. Uh, uh, there's a tongue or something. He would do little, little scribbles. Um, on the sheet. Just little, little light marks. So he'd figure out his positions. And he'd, you, you know, using this action column is very, very few animators use it. I mean, it's there for us. And, and uh, you know, you can go <whistles> boom, mark things. In England, all the animators would write all over their sheets, you know, phone Myrtle at 3 o'clock, you know, <laughs> buy new shoes Saturday. <laughs> the things were a mess. But you should use this, act, the camera instructions, usually pretty clear, and the pen. But I, 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 use that action column as much as you can. 
because you can see the pattern of things that you're doing on, on it. You can see if it's very boring, you know, if, the, if, the, if it's monotonous. You can see rhythms. You start to see the, the physical, visual rhythms in it or something. So Frank would, would then, if he's animating a bear or something sideways, he would then, he put all, he would do everything on the front so that he, he knew he was, he's doing drawing nine and it's a bit, it's an open mouth. He wouldn't have to think about it. He'd concentrate on getting the, the mouth attractive or what he, his whole thing was to be as appealing and empathetic as possible with his work. He'd snuggle up to you in the screen, kind of. And, and so he, 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 and he had to work at his drawing. He really worked at it. And uh, so he'd, ha he'd do this. It's a clever way to do it, isn't it? You figure it all out first, the technology. You got your numbers. And then he's going to work on his drawings and getting those. That's where the energy's going to go, having done the planning. That's a good way to do it. Um, I mean, there's very funny bits of lip sync, isn't it? Like The Simpsons. Very, very funny, this animated thing of the mouth is like this, and then you close the mouth, and there's teeth everywhere, and then you go out to an ooh, like that. And the teeth pop on and off. And it's, it's a funny, it's a cartoony gag. I mean, it's, it's like Matt Groening's Life is Hell drawings. They're, they're hilariously funny. And, and they're, obviously, they're, I love The Simpsons. They're, do, they're doing it to be funny. But for our purposes, generally, they're, you know, the skull's like this. And the teeth are anchored into the skull. And the jaw works on a hinge kind of thing like that. And so it's a, it's a good thing to remember the teeth. I, I mean, if I'm doing a realistic or convincing character, um, anchored, what am I trying to write, anchored. Top teeth, anchored to skull. So we're not going to pop these off and on, unless we're trying to be funny about it. The thing about people's mouth positions, When we, when we talk, there's a, uh, some people, like me, the predominant thing, if I can just, anybody open their mouths just slightly? <laughs> so, um, no, you're, 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 Movie star, this is maybe is more attractive. You always see it with movie star women and stuff and guys. The top teeth are what reads. And a lot of us, like me, it's the bottom teeth. Your top, your top, 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 a lot of top teeth here. Anyway, so, but for general purposes, you know, where there's top teeth or bottom teeth. And, and, and so when we're animating a character, we want to look at the top teeth and the bottom teeth. This thing about um, using a mirror, that animators use a mirror, well, we're animating ourselves half the time anyway. And we want to get away from that and into the character we're supposed to be animating. And if you look at yourself in the mirror, what you're doing is looking at, I'm looking at the guy with a collapsed upper lip and, and bottom teeth, you know, whereas 90% of you have the top teeth, you see? So, uh, and if I try to see my top teeth, it's difficult. So you don't want to animate yourself. You know, you, you, so I'm kind of anti the mirror business because I would like to get away from animating myself. It's a very interesting thing. You know, the, um, I did the animation of the baby most of the way through the picture of the, the rabbit. And when, he, when he's throwing his fit outside the refrigerator, he said, why'd you do that goddamn thing? You know, and he's 
pumping his arms in the air and yelling at the rabbit. And then he stamps off and gooses the woman and see my tray or whatever it is. Um, as I was doing it, I thought, this is very interesting. I've seen, you know, I'm right in the middle of animating it. And I said, but I've seen this guy somewhere recently. I've seen somebody doing this. It's very familiar and very recently familiar. And I'm going through it. And I suddenly realized it was I had a, I got double taxed by the English uh, government or as they were trying to double tax me. It was me freaking out in the kitchen that morning. And it was exactly what I do, you know, Jesus Christ. It was all the actions, <laughs> they were mine. I was just animating me as, as a shrunken Elmer Fudd baby. <laughs> you know? So we tend to, we're projecting everything through ourselves, but these great actors can, can take any, you know, they turn into any, you never know who they are half the time. So as we want to get our range into the characters, for God, we don't look, we don't want to look, we want to get away from ourselves, isn't it? We're using ourselves as the conduit to do something else. If we're skinny, we're trying to draw a fat man. If we're fat, we're trying to draw a skinny man. We don't want to look, look at ourselves in the damn mirror. So we don't, you, we, you know, our creatures are either this, predominantly this or this or this. It's very rare that you get somebody that has both top teeth and bottom teeth working. And the most wonderful voice I ever worked with was Vincent Price, who's absolutely fabulous to, he's not, he's got, half the time he's talked keep away from Marie Antoinette. And he said, and I, I, I just think, oh, stop acting, Richard. We know you love to act. And, and then he just starts talking with the whole lot. So you have top, bottom teeth featured, top teeth featured, and then he goes into both sets. It's absolutely marvelous. And then he had, as he got older, he had these big jowls as well. And the face was amazing to work with. And so he had all this, but the other thing about him was when he turned to the front, you don't see it on the film so much, but in a restaurant with him, the eye, it's like a fish. <laughs> and there's these teeth here. And then the, the, the throat. I, it was fabulous to work with. You had all this material <laughs> to work with. It was just fabulous. And of course, terribly clear terribly clear words and articulation. And um, I said to him in the restaurant, because the fa his face was very, very odd, which is maybe why I was in the horror films. The face was very wide from the side. And then he flipped to the front, and it would go like this. And, and I, I said, uh, my god, your face is like a face. You know, it's, it's so, <laughs> he wasn't very pleased. But he was very funny about himself. I might just tell a Vincent Price story. When I, when I went to meet him at the uh, hotel to give him the script for the recording, and uh, I went to the, to the door and very nervously. And the door opens, and, and he's like way taller than I expected. The head's way up here. And it was all legs. His legs were sort of up at my head. <laughs> so he was like a marionette where you have the string up the back. <laughs> It was all legs going up like this. And he looks down at me, and he says, hello, Richard. Come in. I'm a friendly monster. <laughs> so, and then I sort of, which way do I go? I was standing there, and I was going, going to go this way into the, the sort of living part room. And the whole but this doorway's open, and this is what I see in the doorway. Um, I swear this is true. I'm not exaggerating. There's a bed here, and there's this woman with her legs putting uh, stockings on her legs like this. And she looks, she's dressed on the top. There's clothes on the top, and I think probably panties or something. Like, I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, she's like this. Or, hair was up like that. 
And she says, uh, so he says, friendly monster. And I start, which way do I go? This way or that way? And I started to go this way, and the doorway's here. And she says, tight little ass, very long legs. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a double blow. I sort of <laughs> <laughs> and he was like that all the time. They were both hilariously funny. Anyway, he was all like that. He was, the, he was a marvelous guy and, and wasn't interested in money. And I, I paid him well, but I mean, he, he, wasn't, he didn't give a damn. And, and he was a, just a terrific ham. He said, you know, I'm 100% pure ham. I'll just, you know, and, and so you could do anything. He'd try stuff. And the reason he had that amazing voice was he had this very large throat. He was at the dentist, and the dentist said, my God, you've got a throat, twi a larynx, twice the size of any, anybody I've ever seen. So uh, that would give it this, I can't do it, but the, this deep thing. So that, that was fabulous to work with. Uh, now the secret of, I don't think I need to draw this first anyway. I'd like to Swing it around. The secret of dialogue in animation, and probably in, well, in animation certainly, is this. And it was taught to me by Milt. He said, uh, I had done a lot of study of his uh, tiger uh, 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 in the Jungle Book of the mouth action. And I, I went to his house, and he, this is again when he was. This is before we went down to the, the Mexican restaurant. And, and it's up with all the showbiz, old showbiz people. And, and I was talking to him. I said, gee, God, I saw this mouth action. You, 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 you know, this tremendous command that you have of the, the dialogue. And he's saying, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I said, is there any real secret? He says, I'll say there is. You want to learn the You want a lesson? You want the lesson, Dick? I'll give you the lesson. Here's the lesson. He said, you know that guy, Jim Henson, with uh, the, that little frog? What is it? The, this is when Henson was alive. This is 25 years ago or something. And the Muppets were a big hit. And he said, with that uh, Kermit the Frog, that little thing? He said, he's a genius because he understands what no puppeteers did before. If you see Kukla Fran and Ollie, who used to be on the television in the 40s, 50s, rubbish. He says, and, and it's all like, uh, What's that stuff um, they have in England where if one hits the other? Punch and Judy. And they all go, rah, 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 and it never works. And he said, and they, they just stand there and they go, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't function. And he says, here's Jim Henson. He hasn't got half, he hasn't got a third of the materials to work with that we have, with these goddamn lazy animators we've got, you know? He says, and he's doing a better job of lip action in his rough way than we are. Now why? He said, I learned the secret when I was doing um, Song of the South. And I had this, the fox is going to skin the rabbit alive, or he's threatening the rabbit. And he says, he does this. He says, I didn't move the mouth. It's a, let me draw it here. He says, I've got this fox, and he's here, and the mouth is the teeth are like that, and he's got the rabbit sort of on the end of a pole. I think he's got him tied up or something, and he's got his, I don't know how his hands are, he's got, he's pushing the rabbit, maybe he's pushing in, into a fire or what. He said, what I did was this. I'm going to skin you alive. He said, I hardly move the upper lip. It's just teeth. I'm going to skin you alive. So he said, it's obviously not in the lip action, because I'm going to skin you alive. He said, the secret, Dick, is progress the action. Go somewhere. He said, that's what this genius, Henson, is doing. You watch that little frog or any of the others that he's working when he's doing it. He said, he is going somewhere. He's either going back, sideways, he's down, up, imploding, exploding, whatever it is, 
he's going somewhere. Right? And he says, and we, and somehow the lip, just the opening and closing, he somehow gets it pretty good. And he says, we can't, you know, our lazy guys, they don't, they don't know this. Progress the action. Hello. 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 There was this old witch, I forget what she looked like. She was saying, she had her hands something like like an Italian waiter. Forget, whatever it is. And she was saying, I'm going to make you, no, I'm going to give you the magic elixir. Something like that. It was a sort of Indian voice. I'm going to give you the magic elixir. And I had ra rather nice animation on the hands. I'm going to give you the elixir. It was pretty good. And Art Babbitt came in, and, he said, and I showed it to him. And he said, uh, yeah, it's nice. He said, but Dick, you're twinning the hands. I said, twinning the hands? He said, yeah, they're going at the same time. He said, uh, I hate twinning. Why don't you um, take the same drawings, just one of the hands, and delay it four frames, four, f four frames. Delay. And I said, what do you mean, reanimate it? He said, no, no, the same action. Just, just, just print it and stick it and, and paste it on the drawings so that they, so you're gonna get this. So I did and, and boy, it was a lot better. I'm going to give you the elixir. So it's already much more interesting. And then Ken Harris said, when he saw it, he said, well, that's OK. That's good. But he said, why don't you progress it? And I said, whoops. That's what Milt told me was the secret. He said, oh, yeah, well, I always try to progress it. And I said, well, did you know what Milt says is the Nobody does. And he says, well, they were similar, Ken and Milt, in a way. Anyway, I then took all the drawings, Xerox, to, you know, the new setup, and I progressed the drawings across the page. I mean, leaned forward. So suddenly, you got, I am going to give you the elixir. You see? Same animation, but progressed. I am going to give you the elixir. I'm going to give you the elixir. It's immediately transformed. So the whole thing, again, we're, we're, the lip action is the least important thing, isn't it? Progress it. And that was a smooth, you know, I'm going to skin you alive, or I'm going to give you the elixir, is a slow progression. But you can have all kinds of progressions. Just progress it somewhere, and you're in business. There's just, uh, just a, apropos of, of symmetry, um, most guys don't like, well, you know, this Hollywood thing of high there. It's, it's kind of terrible to see things happening just like that all the time, and people get a prejudice against symmetry. And when you do a, I often go to a, a life drawing class, and there's a, a woman standing there just waiting for the class, you know, she's standing there nude, waiting for the first pose. And she, it's ab she's standing there in perfect symmetry, just waiting like this. And it looks absolutely beautiful. And, and uh, somebody says, what will the first pose be? And, and then somebody will say, well, it's a bit symmetrical. And the woman will say, oh, oh, is it? Oh, well, I, wasn't, I was just standing here. And she said, can you lift up one arm? OK. She lifts up one arm and said, uh, well, that doesn't look too good. Can you turn the head? So, well, that doesn't look too good. Maybe if you move the foot. Um, and of course, all this is dead. What she was doing was standing in a natural symmetrical pose, which is beautiful. 
right? So they've screwed it up right away because of a, this insane, somebody must have written a book somewhere in 1900 or 1899 saying symmetry is bad. It's rubbish. Symmetry is, you, and for acting, we use symmetry when, look at me, I'm starting to lay down the law here. Whenever I'm going authoritative on you, you will notice that I'm, I'm twinning. I'm, uh, you know, I've got a problem with authority and I don't want to be one. <laughs> but when I'm trying to sock a point at you, I will do this. You never do this. <laughs> Always do this. If you see a preacher, any, any of these guys on you know, Southern Baptists or whatever they are, the, the TV, when they're talking about, I saw a guy giving a sermon and, and uh, it was, you will rise to heaven and you will, if you do not do this, you will go down, you will go down, 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 down. And you, then they break it. And you, and you, and you will go up. And you, and you, and you will go down, you know. And all will be seen to be the truth or whatever it is. And we turn the pages of the great book and there's the record of your life before you. Bad, 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 good, 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 good. And then we close the book and down you go <laughs> or up you go. So symmetry can be used terribly, I'm doing it, terribly powerfully, right? You must, must not be afraid to use symmetry, <laughs> especially for, author it's for authority. Somebody in the break asked me, which is a logical, a, log a very good question about lip action. Um, what do you do when somebody's talking very, very, very fast? You know, like, um, I can't do it. Uh, I'm not the pheasant plucker. I'm the pheasant plucker's son, busy plucking feathers till the pheasant plucker comes. They're saying very, very fast, right? If, if um, <laughs> it's the same thing, you would fray, you would hit, still hit, I'm not the pheasant plucker. I'm, I'm not the, whatever the accents you can get, you'd hit those and you'd have to be on ones for us graphic animators. You'd have to be on ones, obviously. But you don't want to, you, you still want to follow the same rules of hitting just the main things, fortune, fortune, because it'll just look like some, you know, a bee squirming around on the mouse. Otherwise you want to get it and, and follow, it's just, exactly the same principles of hitting the accents and everything and, and phrasing it and progressing it and uh, you just, you're just doing it in a, you're just doing it faster. The only thing I'd add to that is that you would reduce your body and head accents by around half so that they aren't flashing around all over the place. And for fast mouth action, it has to be on ones. But still progress it, still phrase it, and still accent it. In the next session, we'll be looking at directing and performance.